I will never write an essay to get my rights from the, uh, he says, I will never write an essay to get my rights as an American citizen. And that was Don Gannon. And that's something he said during a city council meeting. And I do agree with this gentleman here. You should not have to convince the government to give you your rights. You should say, hey, I want my rights. And that's pretty much the end of it. Now, something else for everybody who says there is no such thing as a gun registry. It's a, a conspiracy theory. It's something that the right wing cooked up to uh, scare you about your gun rights. California gun seizure program needs money. California State Department of Justice's armed and prohibited person system, which uses lists of firearm owners cross reference with criminal and mental health records to identify once legal gun owners who may be in possession of weapons in violation of the law. Now, regardless if you think this program is a good idea or not, that's not the point I'm trying to make here. They say there is no list, there is no registry, there is no way to track who or who doesn't have a firearm. The armed and prohibited person system, which uses list, list, list of firearm owners. Now, once again, you may think it's good to cross-reference these lists. My point that I'm making here is they say there is no list. There is a list right here on this paper. This is guns.com, uh, I believe January 26, 2016. You can go look it up for yourself. And this is just one example. Uh, there's so many other places like, like yeah, uh, there is no list of gun owners. In New York, they listed people like they were sex offenders in the, in the newspaper. Project Veritas is a story about that. You can go look that up, but of course, these lists don't exist. Now let's talk about something that's pretty stupid. I'll just call it what it is. Social justice warriors complain that Martin Luther King was not inclusive enough. The uh, you know advocate of nonviolence and um, human rights and liberties and all this stuff, who wrote the I Have a Dream speech, they say that he's not inclusive enough because he didn't include people like transgenders. And one of the students was quoted, this is Mia Ashley. Diversity is so much more than race. Obviously, race still plays a big role. But for people who have uh, who identify differently in gender and all sorts of things like that, they should be included as well. So, yeah. And also the quote that they want to take off of uh, MLK, they said the quote that he replaced was previously there and it was removed because it didn't use the word uh, human race. It referred to the human race as man. Just more silliness right there. And we'll wrap up our segment with this before we go into more special reports. Uh, many people, big guests on the show today, like uh, Robert Tosh Plumley, who he flew for the CIA. Bilderberg uh, elite, he's saying the global super elite must stop Donald Trump at all costs. Basically, they're saying that Trump is not establishment enough. I do agree that Trump is not an establishment candidate, but it doesn't mean I want him to be our next president of the United States. Well, that's it for this segment. Stay tuned for more after this right here on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The wave of refugees peppered with ISIS fighters and ISIS sympathizers are invading Europe all according to plan and with the blessings of European leaders. Jihads are being waged. European women are being raped at epidemic levels. The French city of Calais has become ground zero for the migrant anarchy flooding the rest of Europe. And now a wave of 400,000 plus migrants are entering Italy. But rather than pushing on to Northern Europe, these migrants will remain in Italy as the Schengen Treaty, intended to guarantee open borders, is coming apart at the seams. Six countries, Germany, Austria, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Slovenia, have suspended the treaty for two years, and others appear ready to follow them. In many respects, Schengen no longer exists. Italy's Prime Minister has come under fire after ancient nude statues in Rome's Capitoloni Museum were covered up during a visit by Iran's president. And this is exactly what the ISIS leaders had planned. The conquest of Rome is one of the Islamic State's primary goals, as ISIS intends on beheading the Pope on live television in St. Peter's Square, to be followed by mass beheadings of Christians as Rome is converted into a Muslim city. The ISIS timeline to achieve all this is by 2020, but Europeans are in a chokehold when it comes to airing their grievances. Stringent hate speech laws and intimidation are being used to wage war on European citizens, simply asking their leaders to stop the invasion for the sake of their families. A professor who interrupted a speech by German Chancellor Angela Merkel was quickly escorted out of the room and now faces legal action from Merseburg University, which vowed to review his position and take legal action against him for damaging the faculty's reputation. In October, top security experts warned Merkel that the middle class in Germany is becoming radicalized in response to the migrant influx and that domestic unrest may occur as a result. The warning was circulated among high-ranking security officials in the federal government, according to the report. I believe the challenge is huge, huge. And if a challenge is huge, usually uh, it will trigger fears and concerns. We'll have to address them. 
The German government is also working with Facebook to censor and prosecute people who make anti-migrant statements on social media. Meanwhile, a Dutch man who tweeted that the country's migrant policy was a bad plan received a home visit from police and was cautioned as to his future conduct. Under these policies, and the initial half-million-plus Muslims planting roots in Italy, the outlandish 2020 goal of the ISIS conquest of Rome doesn't seem as fantastical as previously thought. There it is, HRES 569, condemning violence, bigotry, and hateful rhetoric towards Muslims in the United States. And that is that in the House Judiciary, um, brought forward by... Who's that brought forward by? Who's the sponsor of that? A whole bunch of people. I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to read that for myself. What does it say? Just a resolution, and it's um, basically a, a blatant attack on the First Amendment. John Bound for Infowars.com. We are joined by Robert Tosh Plumley on Facebook. It's Robert Plumley five. We'll send that out in a Twitter link uh, for everybody and on Facebook. Uh, he's been censored by Facebook. He's been harassed. He's been, you know, subpoenaed. You name it for what you're about to hear. And I don't usually do buildups like this, but I didn't do a buildup this big when Donald Trump came on. Uh, but this is a big deal. So he's got a whole stack of news that's since come out confirming what he told us three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, six months ago. And now he feels a lot safer to say even more. So let's go to Robert Tosh Plumley. Uh, Robert, thank you for coming on, sir. Well, thank you, Alex, for having me back on. But Wow, uh, who is that guy you're talking about? <laughs> anyway. Well, he's a guy that's got huevos the size of bowling balls. Now, break down the latest. Uh, Fast and Furious, it's coming out. Uh, uh, El Chapo, Benghazi, you've got the floor. Go ahead. Okay, well, let me let me make a qualifier here. This this call may be monitor, uh, monitored by federal agencies, and that's about all I can say about that. Uh, thank you for having me back on, Alex. I do appreciate it. I uh, hope we can, um, I'm winging it as we go. I don't take notes. But uh, one of the main reasons, uh, if you remember, we talked about Fast and Furious uh, many years ago and made allegations that the uh, U.S. made weapons, international weapons market, was shipping arms and ammunition uh, to the Mexican army uh, through the direct commercial sales program to Mexico. Made the allegation at that point in time that uh, Mexico uh, federal, well, Mexico Army was uh, allowing those guns and ammunition to be pilfered and being sent to the cartel. What prompted me to uh, get in touch with you and come back on your program was to bring up to date about those arms shipments from Fast and Furious that went to the Mexican Army, that was pilfered from the Mexican Army, and then went to the Sinaloa cartel. And that's El Chapo, who he, last week they found at his hideout a 50 caliber Barrett from Fast and Furious. Right, and they also found 40 caliber uh, anti-aircraft weapons um, at another location uh, that was uh, attributed back to um, uh, Joaquin or Shorty. But um, at that point in time, uh, we were talking about we lost we lost a border patrol agent, uh, Brian Terry, and I, and I know you know about that. Um, and the weapons that were attributed to his murder have recently been found. Some of them in the safe house there at Guzman. That hit the mainstream media news just very briefly and has been covered up since that time. Uh, that's the reason for me coming back on the show here, to bring attention back to mainstream media, drop that like a hot potato a couple of weeks ago. Uh, ATF has no comments. Uh, certain various people have made... Um, request for the ATF to produce the serial numbers of those weapons that was found in Guzman's hideaway. They have, to date, refused to do that. Comment from the U.S. State Department in reference to the direct commercial sales program that allowed those weapons to be shipped to the Mexican Army has no comment at this point. A series of emails were sent at that point in time. I'm talking about Fast and Furious. At that point in time, to the State Department, uh, requesting a rundown on the amount of weapons that were shipped uh, through the you know Blue Lantern Report and Direct Commercial Sales Program shipped to uh, the Mexican Army. Uh, that is now a, been classified as a top secret um, 
committee sensitive um, uh, investigation. And, and just to be clear, since you were first on three plus years ago, it has come out in the Chicago Tribune, El Paso Times, that indeed the number two under El Chapo, who was extradited, 